What's going on, guys? Dan from SSG bringing you a toppy analysis of the RBET Rulers event. This was an invitational 42 invited players earning their invites via the RBET series. Gaining a top 8 there would invite you to this tournament. So we're going to get right into the top 8 decklist. We're looking at Diva Hero Zombies here. And the first thing that points out to me is the two copies of Mystic Tomato. I love this linear card, right? It just searches you into your goblin zombie which can set up the diva plus goblin zombie combo and once you have an existing goblin zombie in play the deep sea diva is just going to completely go off and basically kill your opponent right you can be able to make multiple level six synchros any other extender is also going to help kill your opponent it's not quite an otk by itself but i like having a linear access to the goblin zombie with the four recruiters of course adding two copies of Pyramid Turtle next to the Mystic Tomatoes can go help you find those Goblin Zombies. And it also the Tomato also gives you access to the two copies of Destiny Hero Malicious. A lot of the rest of the engine here just looks pretty solid. I like having Stratos and Evil Hero Infernal Prodigy in these style of decks. It just gives you a lot more basic plays and helps you set up for your future turns. Adding Stratos to the deck, very powerful. And the Hero engine is just really strong in these zombie style of decks. Gives you access to a lot of great cards, and uh, Future Fusion being one of them, being able to dump multiple cards into your graveyard and set up an absolute zero is just very strong. Zombies also has a pr pretty good matchup against Black Wings, which uh, is really strong. I think having a good Black Wing matchup is very good. You can ha just put a fast clock on your opponent and uh, get those combos going. So um, notable things in the sideboard. I love the DD Crows and Cyber Dragons. That's an SSG special, as you guys know. And uh, the Light Mirror, targeting out those Fairy decks as well as Light Sworn. So I do like uh, Skill Drain as well. I think Skill Drain, a lot of your effects can pop off, right? You still have the ability to fetch your cards with Mystic Tomato, with Pyramid Turtle, as well as Goblin Zombie. Militia still activates as well as Plague Splitter and Mizuki. So you can still play under Skill Drain. I like the two copies of Skill Drain in the sideboard for that reason. Extra deck looks fairly standard here. You get access to the Hero Monsters, and uh, you have the Chimera Tech in there. Pretty solid. Um, I like the Doomkaiser Dragon as well. I think that card is very powerful if you're going to play a bunch of zombie mirrors. So, for pretty strong deck here. I like the list quite a bit, and we'll go on to the next one. In this list here, also in 7th place, we have another Diva Zombie deck. So, the th big thing that sticks out to me is the one copy of Illblood in this list. And Illblood is just one of my absolute favorite cards. Um, growing up, I played it quite a bit with card of safe return but not in this format in this format it just provides you with a big beat stick that can get that can you can grab off of one of your three copies of pyramid turtle which i think is very powerful in this format this deck also likes to play gale over a third copy of deep sea diva which i think is fairly strong i think uh, gale is a very powerful card that outs a lot of high impact synchro monsters you have only one copy of the mystic tomato because you're going up to three pyramid turtles i love the copy of uh, Necrogarna here. I like Necrogarna a lot in these decks because it can protect your Goblin Zombie and kind of just make those D.Va plays more consistent. It also protects monsters that you can then sack for Caius on the following turn. Um, I think it does a lot. It also adds more value to your Burial from Different Dimension, which of course I love in this deck. Um, including this card is just unbelievable, right? I mean, even if you're just putting your Mizuki back into the graveyard, it's a very high-impact late-game card that's just going to win a lot of games. And that's always been my experience. I always elect to play the copy of Burial from Different Dimension in my uh, zombie-based decks. And um, so I like this monster lineup quite a bit, having access to Sangin, you have Spirit Reaper in the main deck, I like Trigodia in this style of deck as well. Um, I also like the one copy of Dust Tornado in the main deck. Um, the previous player also elected to play Dust Tornado as well, um, both um, going one Dust Tornado to most likely answer cards like Royal Oppression. Um, just really strong, right? You're just going to be able to make sure your combos go off, and having the extra spell and trap removal I think is very powerful. This list also electing to play two copies of the Book of Life. So both zombie lists playing one Dust Tornado, two Book of Life. And I think those are just the ways you want to be interacting with this format, right? Book of Life is an extender that can interrupt your opponent's graveyard, which is very powerful. It just does two things at once. And also Dust Tornado, as I mentioned, just an all-around good card that gives you access to removal for the copies of Royal Oppression that um, most Blackwing players are playing. Um, I just really like the Ill Blood here. I like a lot of things about this list. Gale seems very interesting to me, something I'm definitely going to look into adding to my zombie decks. Um, the sideboard, I like the 
Sirocco, I think it's a little bit narrow, but with so many Black Wings topping all the previous online events, it's just really important to have something to answer those type of things, even if you feel like you have a strong matchup. Um, and I think these players who elected to bring Zombies felt like they had a good matchup against Black Wings, because you have to bring a deck that you feel you can beat Black Wings with, right? And these decks just have a lot of tools to do that. Um, I like the random one copy of Wing Blast, I think that's pretty sweet. Um, looking into the side deck uh, again here, um, soul release really strong, get those frogs out of here, get all that nonsense, all those combo decks out of there, two copies of DD Crow for the fast graveyard removal, um, and you, you can just access the graveyard, your opponent's graveyard so easily in this deck with the Book of Life, the DD Crows, the soul release, just really strong, two copies of Deep Prison, as well as two copies of Pulling the Rug, so pretty solid deck list here, I like the zom this uh, take on the zombie deck as well. Next, we have a third copy of Diva Zombies in this top eight here. So I think what happened is the Diva Zombie decks really just beat up on a lot of the players who brought Black Wings, I would imagine. I didn't take a look at the whole deck list, all the deck lists, but I think that this deck just has a good matchup, and they ended up in the top eight here. Um, this deck is actually splashing a light package of two copies of Ryko, the one copy of Lila, and of course Charge of Light Brigade to enable the one copy of Chaos Sorcerer, and I think that's just really powerful. I think Ryko's a great card on its own. It's very good against Black Wings and Heroes, just being able to trade one for one with those bigger threats that are um, easy to normal summon for the opponent. I think Lila is really strong with a bunch of Deep Prison Mirror Force running around, less people on Wing Blast. Um, as you can see, all these zombie decks on one copy of Wing Blast here, so a lot lot less Wing Blast running around, so I think uh, the, chain, the Chainable Traps aren't so uh, prevalent, so we're going to have Lila coming in and doing its thing. Of course, Charger Light Brigade adds some velocity in the early game to finding those cards and just milling things into the graveyard. Of course, if you can mill a random zombie, that's really powerful. I like the addition of two copies of Book of Moons to support those Rikos. You can play a really grindy game if those Rikos end up living um, and being able to flip a Riko and then sack for Caius after like protecting it with Book of Moon is very, very strong as well. Um, I also just like Raikou and Spirit Reaper. I think those cards have a lot of synergy, clearing the way, and then normal summoning a Reaper is very powerful as well. Um, we have Fiendish Chain. Fiendish Chain is pretty interesting. Um, I think cards just like pretty good. Does uh, some cool stuff. Um, protects your Raikou, which you can then flip and then get some value that way. Um, Trap Dust Shoot in the main, of course. Um, onto the sideboard, we have two copies of the Nobleman of Extermination. That's a very interesting one here. I think the card's really good. It just clears the way. It just gives you extra removal to start making pushes. Um, I like two copies of Soul Taker. I've been thinking about adding Soul Taker to my decks over Smashing Ground in the sideboards to um, really take charge of the fairy matchup. I think the Dimensional Alchemist is one of their key cards, and being able to make that card miss timing is very powerful. Um, it's sort of a concession only to the um, Dimensional Alchemist, as Soul Taker doesn't really do that much um, in this format. Um, that's dissimilar from Smashing Ground. Of course, being able to target a smaller thing can be relevant as well, but I think it's mostly a concession to the Dimensional Alchemist, and the life points don't really matter too much, right? It's just going to be a good removal spell for you, and it's going to make that D-Alchemist timing, which I think is very powerful and worth the inclusion of Soul, uh, Soul Taker. Um, we have one copy of what looks like Zombie World, really strong card, um, just... Uh, let you combo off and let your thing stay in play and don't get kiased. So, as well as two copies of pulling the rug. So three cards I can come in against monarch type decks. Um, very good here. We have two copies of uh, nobleman of um, crossout as well. Um, four noblemen's on the side, right? Um, nobleman is just really solid. I think it just kind of clears the way, lets you OTK your opponent, uh, lets your reaper get in there. Extra deck looks fairly standard. They all look pretty similar to one another. Um, Pretty strong here. I like the two D crows, two cyber dragons. I love the um, soul takers. That's a solid addition. And um, yeah, this deck looks pretty sweet. And moving along here, we have Christia Swarns in this top eight. Christia, just a really powerful card that's worth building around, right? Of course, we have the fairy decks, but now Christia Swarns. And this is a deck I've kind of worked on off and on for quite a while. I haven't got a chance to profile on the channel yet, but this is going to give me a reason because look how linear this deck is. I think it's just so powerful. It just plays all the good fairy cards that you just want to turbo out, right? You have the three copies of Soul, Purity, and Light. You have the orange lights as well as the christias and then you're just gonna there's no nonsense in this deck it's just all the powerful lights orange right you want three lila three Ryko, and then two celestias because it's a fairy as well as 
comboing with the three copies of Hamster you play to enable those two Celestias and uh, just get those Raikos into play to interact with the opponent, which I think is very strong. Having three Hamsters in this deck is just going to make sure you're interacting in some way, f fetching out those Raikos to pop cards which can enable like your Christias coming down and actually like impacting the board, not getting bottomless or things like that. So, um, and the rest of the deck is just ways to turbo out, right? Get those Judgment Dragons and Christias online with the three Solar Recharge, Charge of Light Brigade, two copies of Gold Sark, searching out your power cards. Um, I like the uh, the three hamsters also do a great job of turboing, turboing your stuff out. You have the two copies of Beckon and Light to do it all again, uh, reborning those, um, getting those Christias and, um, two Judgment Dragons to your hand as well, so, um, as well as two Honest as well, you know, of course, you're gonna run two Honest, it's a fairy, you can add it back with Beckoning, and, uh, Call the Haunted to Reborn that Christia at instant speed, very strong in response to cards like Book of Life and things of that nature, um, this deck is just really sweet, it's really linear, it's, I love all the one-ofs for the, um, Light Sworn's just having extra names, right? You just get those names in the graveyard, play the good ones at multiple copies, play the one-ofs, um, I like the, um, I like the fairy count. It's very high. And, um, yeah, Dex is pretty sweet. Cyborg, you have all the spell and trap removal in the cyborg, which I like quite a bit. Um, you don't want to clog your main deck game plan with these type of cards. You, so you're going to have the Trunade, the Heavy, and the MST in the cyborg, as well as two copies of Royal Decree. You want those all to come in against the matchups that are really going to try and slow you down. Of course, you have two copies of Royal Oppression. Cards just really strong in combination with Soul Purity and Light, in combination with the Resolve Celestia. You're going to win a lot of games without even dropping your um, Arshore Christia or your Judgment Dragon. Um, three, Thunder King, of course, going first. I think it's just an excellent card. Um, three copies of the Consecrated Light. It's a fairy, so I see the uh, reason why you want to play three. Uh, um, but I think it's kind of a lot. Um, you do have a better matchup against Black Wings with that card in your sideboard, so I don't mind it. Extra deck, um, one of the notable inclusions, of course, is the Ancient Seeker Wyvern card. It's just insane. If you can make it, it's going to OTK your opponent. And then you have um, one copy of Tempest Magician, which I've been adding to a lot of my decks. I think the card's pretty sweet, does a lot of cool things, and can kind of finish off your opponent after like a Resolve Judgment Dragon has dealt a bunch of damage to them. So this deck is pretty awesome. I like it quite a bit. And on to the top four, of course, we have Black Wings in the top four. Very linear aggro deck here, just attacks on so many different levels. Of course, it can't be a top eight without Black Wings, right? This card is this deck goes uh, actually extremely aggressive with the two copies of Nobleman of Extermination, as well as, of course, Heavy Storm and MST to attack opponents' back rows. We have the three copies of Upstart Goblin just wanting to be extremely linear and aggressive as possible. Um, cutting down to two copies of Dark Greffer, pretty interesting here. I think I like to max out on that type of card, um, as well as Bora going down to two from the normal list that play a lot of three, but I can see why you would only play two Bora. Um, but I love the Upstarts trying to find your power cards as soon as possible. Um, of course, the trap lineup is a no-nonsense trap lineup, very strong. Three Icarus, one Mirror Force, two uh, Oppression, which I think you just have to play card. is extremely powerful, one of the main reasons to play Black Wings. And then you have the um, Psalm Judgment and Trap Dust Shoot, of course. In the sideboard, pretty interesting inclusion of Bait Dull here. Card's pretty interesting. Um, I bet like you can put yourself in some situations where you can force your opponent to activate some really bad things for them. Um, but I feel like that only happens so often, you know, I think it's just, um, it's a removable, you know, it's fine. Um, two copies of Skill Drain, I like Skill Drain and Black Wings, um, I tend to play those, those in my sideboard, but, um, I think it's just really interesting, people kind of think the Black Wings have all these great effects, you know, but, um, they're also just beat sticks that can win the game, and especially with, um, the Synchros that come out from Vayu, just, they don't have effects anyway, right, let's just beat down with them, and Skill Drain's gonna be really good in combinations with those. As well as um next to Royal Oppression, of course, Skill Drain is going to be powerful as well. Um, I like the one deck Devi. I like the two um, Light Imprisoning Mirrors. Pretty solid there. Um, extra deck looks fairly standard to me. And yeah, Black Wings, top four. Also in top four, we have someone who elected to play the Frog Slicer combo deck here. Check out Frog Slicer on YouTube. He's an excellent content creator, and um, he just makes sweet decks like this one. But uh, this person decided to have their own take on the deck. Um, this is just a heavy combo deck for those who don't know. Car the deck is just extremely powerful. It does a lot of different things, like draw your entire deck and then uh, make triple armory arm <laughs> and equip it to some big synchro monster. Really strong here. Um, I've seen openings with like multiple synchro monsters plus duplock is just insane um 
th triple symbol of heritage. I think that's just one of the more powerful combo cards in any deck. Um, card just really strong. Of course, you can cycle all three um, substitutes into the graveyard and then have a free frog monster into play with the copy of um, symbol of heritage there. Triple avarice. You're just looking to really churn through your deck and find um, ways to get those poison draws um, on and off the battlefield to keep drawing multiple cards and draw your whole deck eventually. Of course, Fishboard Blaster is going to be the way you make a lot of your synchro plays. Um, and Exerion plus Average, just putting all your cards back, doing it over and over and over again. And, um, really linear combo deck that um, just has a lot of different options once it does draw a bunch of cards. Um, interesting package in the sideboard. You have a bunch of Monarchs. You have the three Caius, two Mobius, um, two Treebone Frog in the sideboard, as well as three um, Soul Exchange. So that package is pretty nice. Um, my body is pretty interesting. You're going to be making high impact synchro monsters. You don't want them to just kind of like die to random things. Brain control on the side as well. This deck is just kind of like, it looks like a pile of nonsense with like copies of Magical Mallet and stuff, but it's kind of no nonsense. It's a linear combo deck that can really just, once it gets going, can just have access to all these powerful extra deck monsters. Three copies of Armory Arm. I mean, come on, like you're basically just equipping your Armory Arms to make more room on the board. So, um, really strong there and i think that um this deck is just really awesome it, it was innovated by um frog slicer himself and then this player elected to play the frog slicer deck in um and all the way to a top four finish at the rulers event so pretty strong here um and yeah i like the deck i think it's sweet um i won't try to play it because it's really complicated and leads to a lot of like board states that not a lot of people enjoy watching but i think it's a lot of fun and um i will eventually build it and um play it just to like have fun and mess around with it but um yeah, deck's really sweet, just does awesome things, and really, really powerful. On to the second place deck, we have Hero Beat, electing to play three copies of Deep Sea Diva and two copies of Spine Gilman um, to really accelerate those Miracle Fusions to be live and also just um, add more B6 to your deck, right? You're going to be able to synchro with those cards, make copies of Cataster, uh, as well as um, Magical Android. Two copies of Magical Android, because that's usually the one you're going to go for on turn one. I usually elect to go with two Cataster, one Android, but I do, I mean, Android's a really powerful card. I mean, it, it, turn one, that's usually what you're going to make, and gaining life in a control deck is also really strong as well. Um, I like this take on the deck. I love the one copy of Compulsory. I think the card's just really flexible. It deals with, like, highly problematic cards, as well as breaking up small synchro plays that can really threaten your, your, um, board things like black rose plus dandelion just like bounce the dandy to hand then run over the um the debris dragon and you know you just don't want to get black rose when you don't have like starly road or solemn set um so i think that can just uh, break up some high impact plays i think uh, the inclusion there is really strong triple miracle fusion because you have the divas to fuel those water monsters which i think is really strong there um i like the double spine gilman it seemed like this player ended up drawing it quite a bit in the finals match that i was watching but I think the downside, the upsides really outweigh the downside. Um, having, uh, getting those two water monsters engraved just really strong. And um, being able to have the Gilman still in deck afterwards, I think is good as well. I mean, having Cataster as a removal, as a, a threat that can also remove problematic um, permanents on your opponent's side, really strong there. And um, you have um, two copies of Hero Blast for the late game. This deck can tend to run out of threats um, in really grindy matchups. I think Hero Blast just adds two threats to your decks and gets a plus one really strong card um, that just gains interaction in combination with Neos Elias. Um, one copy of Wing Blast. I like that inclusion. You know, you have some forms of card advantage you're going to be able to discard, and uh card's fine. I mean, I like the Chainable Trap in Wing Blast. Um, side deck, you have um, Fossil Dinos, which I think is good. Flip and destroy a bunch of other things. You have... Banisher is really strong. I like the one copy of Warrior Lady. Um, I expected to see more Warrior Lady in this top eight. I think the de the card is just unbelievable right now. I've been putting it in a lot of my decks that I've been building the last couple weeks. The card's just incredible. It just does so many different things. It's excellent against Black Wings. Um, you have one copy of Super Poly. Pretty sweet inclusion there. Three copies of Pulling the Rug, which I think is um, awesome as well. Um, and the one Oppression in the side. Um, Extra deck's pretty strong. You're going to have at three absolute zeros. Just access to that card is extremely powerful. Of course, you have Gaia as well. Um, and yeah, I like this deck quite a bit. It just looks solid. I like Deep Sea Diva in these Hero Beat style decks. And uh, yeah, I also, yeah, I just like all of it. I, it's good. It's a solid list. And you expect to see one of these in every top eight, as it's just one of the better control decks in the format. 
And in first place, we have a Fairy deck that was piloted by ProStorm. A lot of unique things in this deck, and Fairy's just is one of my favorite decks in the format. When, this is actually the first video I saw that got me into Edison format. I mean, of course, I played a lot of Edison back in the day, and I always played a lot of retro formats. Um, but when I saw a Fairy deck that was... Um, profiled on E3's channel, I was like, I'm all in, I'm playing this format, This, and I'm just so happy to see the success of this deck, I love, love, love all six recruiters, I always play the three Nova Summoner and the three um, Shining Angels, I think you could go down to two Summoners, but I, the three is awesome, it just gives you fast access to the Christia, it's the most consistent way to get to your removal of the three copies of DD Warrior Lady, I think the three DD Warrior Lady definitely helped a lot in this event, I think it was just an excellent call to play fairies, mainly for the DD Warrior Lady access. We have just really strong deck here. We have 42 cards with two Yadagaratsu, so not real two legacy Yadagaratsu, not really using um, at, it as an upstart goblin, but more as a way to try and gain card advantage. Um, I think that if someone dust tornadoes your back row and you chain the uh, Yada, that's a plus one, right? And um, that's a way to get advantage in a deck that really, really needs desperate um, forms of card advantage as this deck is just trying to grind your opponent down to nothing and then beat them down with a, an eventual Christia. Um, I love the three Christias in this deck. I don't know why people are playing less than three. Cards just extremely powerful. Um, th this list just looks awesome. I, I like everything about this list. I like the heavy trap lineup. I like the Legacy of Yada Garatsu. I'm definitely going to try that out for myself. Um, one copy of Raikou. I've been shaving down Raikou as well. I like to see the one copy um, from Pro Storm here. I think that it's just a little bit slow, and um, the milling doesn't really benefit you too much. So um, I like the one Raikou just as another removal spell, but not trying to rely on it. You know, you have quite a bit of normal summons in this deck. You don't want to add more. Um, there's other ways to remove creatures um, than to add, just stuff a bunch of extra normal summons in your deck. Um, I love Freed. Card's excellent. Um, Cyber Valley, I'm sure, did a lot of work for him. Um, being able to have access off that with Shining Angel as a one of his, his flexibility there. Two copies of Book of Moon. Um, you have Brain Control and Mind Control um, comboing with the Herald of Orange Lights to Synchro, but also with that um, Cyber Valley. Just really strong, right? Just Shining Angel giving you basically four copies of Cyber Valley is going to make those Mind Control and Brain Controls really powerful. Um, and yeah, side deck, another copy of Free, two copies of Thunder King. I like Thunder King in the side. I'm, I haven't been manning it too much in my fairy lists. Um, I love the Mask of Restrict. I think this deck really can lose to Caius quite a bit, or even Ryza, just putting you so far behind when your recruiters get put to the top of the deck. Um, another player electing to co play a copy of Compulsory. Card's really flexible. Um, I love the Breaker. You end up in, a, in these grindy matchups. You end up in these card advantage wars, and any plus one in fairies is just really strong because all your cards just trade one for one with your opponent so effectively. And being able to have a uh, access to a plus one in breaker in the sideboard and the matchups where you want it in those grindy type matchups really strong. Um, two copies of um, My Body's a Shield, really powerful. Protect your Christia. Um, just protect your monsters. Keep them in play. Don't let your... Um, Shine Angels die to random smashing ground type effects. Um, extra deck looks pretty solid. You have another player playing the um, copy of Tempest Magician as well as the Ancient Sacred Wyvern. So access to those cards. I love the um, Air Knight Parshath. Doesn't come up too often, but when it does, is extremely powerful. Um, Avenging Knight Parshath. So this deck is pretty sweet. It looks like Pro Storm put a lot of work into this deck, a lot of random techs and things like that, that um really turned out for him. And just congrats to him for playing such a difficult deck. This deck is really, really hard to play. It's really hard to grind out every single game. And you have to have a lot of, like, it's a high skill deck. You know, you have to play, um, really just make every decision matters. And um, there's no, like, linear combo in this deck or anything like that. Of course, Christy is going to win you a bunch of games. But I think um, you really have to fight for every one of those wins. And, um, against a field full of top players all it's an invitational right people who all topped events so being able to play a deck with this much uh flexibility this much play to it is very difficult in a field like that and being able to outplay everyone is just unbelievable really very high um show of his skill and congrats to him i wanted to give a shout out to e3 of course for running this event keegan is an excellent youtuber he brings so much to the edison community he's such a good advocate for it and just being able to um um, run these uh, tournaments all year long. I followed the whole time. It's an extremely, extremely fun to watch, and I'm so happy that someone can bring so much joy to um, the Edison community. And um, that's about it, guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the um, decks 
in the comment section below. I think these decks are just really awesome. Really, really good time to see the adjustments. Um, not just a bunch of Blackwing decks. These decks came out with a mission to beat the Blackwing decks, and they accomplished it pretty well, um, only allowing one into the top eight. But without further ado, this is Dan V from SSG signing out.